and welcome to Shalom Alekum. So today on Shalom Alekum, it is the first day of Tourette's Awareness Month. And it's not just on Shalom Alekum, it's in the rest of the world too. I'm not just making it up. So from today, May 15th through June 15th, every Sunday's video will be talking about neurological health. Mostly talking about Tourette's, tics, and how they apply to people with OCD. Now I am not very knowledgeable on Tourette's Syndrome, which is why I invited my friend Anise from this channel Squeak Code to talk about it. On the channel Squeak Code, she discusses Tourette's Syndrome, OCD, and much other fascinating mental health stuff that I think you guys would love. The link to her channel will be in the description if you are interested in checking it out. A few months ago, I asked Anise about what it's like living with Tourette's Syndrome. This video is the result of that interview. She shares a lot of great information about Tourette's Syndrome and her personal experience with it. I think you guys will find it very interesting and some of you may even be able to relate to it. And stay tuned for the last question where she talks about why OCD and Tourette's are so deeply intertwined. I think a lot of you guys will find that very, very interesting, especially if you live with OCD. Anyway guys, I will send it off to her now. Thank you. I'm Anais. I'm from the channel Squeak Co, where I talk about things all about OCD and Tourette's and other mental health things as well. And it is my absolute pleasure to be hosted here by Kat. Thank you very much for inviting me. For Tourette's Awareness Month, I'm going to be answering a few questions about Tourette's. So hopefully you will learn something new and find this educational. My first question is, what is Tourette's Syndrome? What is Tourette's Syndrome? Tourette's Syndrome is a type of tic disorder, typically considered the most severe type of tic disorder, but to be diagnosed with it, you must have multiple motor tics, one vocal tic, and in theory these must have started by the age of 18 or 21. But there are cases where people will get diagnosed later in life and they may have had milder tics when they were younger and didn't notice them or didn't realise that they were tics. My second question is, what is a tic? So a tic is essentially an urge, an impulse to do something. The theory from what I've read is that there is an excess of dopamine in the basal ganglia essentially telling the body to do different things. I like to liken it to that sensation when you need to itch something or that sensation when you feel you need to cough or you need to sneeze. You have that little urge preceding a movement. So they're generally disvoluntary or involuntary with you. The urge you cannot control and you can somewhat control the outcome but you do need to do it eventually. In the same way you can delay a cough or a sneeze, you can also delay a tick to a certain extent but it's very uncomfortable to do so. Now that we know what a tick is, what are your ticks? What are my ticks? Okay, so... Okay, I was gonna say I'm, I'm filming at a very low ticky moment. Um, because that's generally when I film, but sometimes when I talk about my own tics, then they, they come. My main tic uh, is actually a squeak, like that, and that is actually why my channel is called Squeak Code, because everyone thought that my squeaks were code, they had to clap, which it isn't, by the way. Um, that is the main one, and that's actually how I was diagnosed with Tourette's, because that was a very obvious vocal tic. In the past, I've had grunts, I've had sniffs, um, I've had a variety of facial tics when I was younger, I used to go cross-eyed, which was not very pleasant. I would furrow my brow. I actually don't even know how I would furrow my brow. It's almost as if they found a combination of muscle movements that I was otherwise unaware of. Currently, I have a lot of nose area moving and I bite my teeth, so on my channel I also made a video on how to use a mouth guard for this kind of tick, when they're really bad, because there are times when I get very excited or very worried about something, and it will kind of transfer to my shoulder, so I used to have one word basically headbutt my shoulder. I sometimes say words as well, especially in the evenings, I usually say piglets quite a lot, and I've said a variety of other words and I have a little bit of echolalia, so there are some words that just sound really good and I need to imitate them or say them. And I also have a growl, I sometimes go something like that. So one that I forgot is I also do do the middle finger. I don't say swear words but I do give the middle finger. Fortunately I don't have to do it in your face, I can do it in my pocket and that's just fine. It's more the action of having to stretch out my middle finger. It's not the most socially flattering disorder but I honestly think my tics could be a lot worse. How do your tics interfere with your daily life? Fortunately they don't affect my social life very much. I have a wonderful partner and wonderful friends who are very accepting of my tics and I'm someone who can actually delay or suppress my tics a lot so if I don't know someone very well I can keep them in even though it's a bit uncomfortable or I'll just kind of look away, tick and then look back. But there are some other ways in which they affect me. Times um, when I'm squeaking a lot um, and I know I'm feeling very ticky. When I would squeak a lot, for instance, it would affect a lot how I was breathing because I'd be making this noise as I breathed in. So I remember if I was going cycling, 
and I was squeaking a lot, I would just not be very good <laughs> at cycling and I'd run out of air. Um, or for instance, my current major tick, which is biting my front teeth. There have actually been times where I've had actually a really sore mouth, really sore gums, just from the action of putting pressure on my teeth. And I won't lie, I am quite worried that I'm going to damage them. And when I used to have lots of kind of shoulder ticks, or like I have lots of cracky joint ticks as well, it is basically repetitive stress. So I have had lots of muscle pain, which are the result of just doing ticks over and over again. Oh, and I have lost my voice in the past from squeaking a lot. I think my voice is now accustomed to doing this, but that can also happen. I know sometimes people with mental illness can be triggered by certain things that make their mental illness worse. Do you find that anything triggers your tics? Yes, actually. So talking about the tics and directing my attention towards them will generally lead to more tics happening, which is why when I started talking about them before, I immediately ticked, even though I'd been feeling quite non-ticky. Um, also feeling tired, so not getting enough sleep will make me more likely to tick, especially in the evening, which is when I am more tired. And when I'm very excited or when I'm very stressed, basically when I have a high level of energy, but a good mood or a bad mood, then that will also lead to me ticking a lot or basically not being able to control my tics as much. Because I kind of always have the background urge to do it, but most of the time I can ignore it or delay it or won't have to do it as much to satisfy it, whereas when I'm very energetic it's like that signal is amplified and I just have to do it there and then. My next question is, what types of medications and therapies are out there for Tourette's? What types of medication and therapies are out there for Tourette's? Okay, so this is an interesting one. I personally haven't done anything to treat Tourette's. In terms of therapies, there is habit reversal therapy, which I believe in theory is a way of being able to identify what a tick feels like, breaking it down and then changing it to something that doesn't affect you as much. Actually, I have kind of done this on myself. So I used to have a tick which was a bit like a snort when Oinko would go like that. and. I won't lie, I was very embarrassed by this tick, so I kind of managed to slow this tick down so I would do it slower and slower, especially when I got the urge and I'd like really get it out of my system but do it slowly, kind of like that. And by getting used to doing that it kind of became more of a purr, more of a growl, and I don't know, I feel slightly less embarrassed doing it in that way than just making this big snorty sound. So I think that is the basis of habit reversal therapy. Unfortunately where I live they don't offer this on the healthcare system that I'm on. And it would be different if I lived in a different city, but such is my luck. And then medication. So there's none that's specifically for Tourette's, but you can take, I think dopamine agonists basically should lower the urges to tick. And those would generally be very low levels of antipsychotics. In theory, it, it basically stops the dopamine. I think it stops the dopamine, which means you don't get as many urges. And another thing I read is basically Tourette's is the opposite of Parkinson's. So Parkinson's is, I guess, the lack of dopamine. It's hard to initiate and motivate movement. Whereas Tourette's is the opposite. You've just got too many signals in your brain saying, do this, do this, do this, even though you don't really need to do it. I actually would like to talk about this more in depth in the future, but at the time of filming this video, I don't feel qualified enough to say all of these things. I know also they can offer CBT for dealing with tics, because in many cases tics can be mild, and it's more embarrassment or people not understanding them, more so than the consequences it causes to you. I think when Tourette's affects your daily life, then finding an appropriate therapy or medication is a good idea, but if it's just bothering others, but it's not bothering you, then Unfortunately, I think it's the other person's problem to learn to understand what it's like to have Tourette's. Do you have any coping skills that help you when your tics are bad? Mm, not really, I just... I don't know, the thing is, if I really need to tick, the best thing I can do is just let it out. There is one tick that really bothers me right now, and that is biting my lower teeth. So, I actually bought some of these mouth guards that you kind of mould yourself to your mouth, and I just wear those when I feel those ticks coming on, because chewing on them gives me the same sensation as, I guess, doing this biting tick, and at least it's not damaging my teeth. So that would be my number one coping skill, I think. I, I would also like to add, I don't think my Tourette's is particularly severe compared to that of other people. I do think most cases of Tourette's and tick disorders aren't necessarily severe, and most people might not even realise that they have it. Um, but right now, I think I've learned to accept that it's just, you know, something that happens and I think that's the best coping skill to have. And when it's a tick that is damaging me in some way, then I can find ways to minimise it. And the mouth guard is my best example of that. What are the biggest misconceptions the public has about Tourette's syndrome? I think a lot of people equate it to the swearing disorder. So when people swear a lot, they say, 
oh, if only I had Tourette's to justify it, or oh, that person sounds like they have Tourette's because they're cussing a lot. And again, it's just not really that at all. 10% of people with Tourette's cuss, but it's more about having these urges that you can't control. And most people, when they do swear, there is intentionality behind it. So it's very different for a person who ticks to swear, they don't mean it, it's just something they have to do, versus, I guess, someone who swears on purpose. I think that is one of the biggest misconceptions. Oh, and the other one I get a lot is, oh, you don't look like you have Tourette's. No, you don't have Tourette's, you're not swearing all the time. But again, that's kind of the same thing. And I guess there's also the people who just think it's a lie, or people, an excuse people use to get out of things, but obviously that isn't the case. So I think those are the two biggest misconceptions. Fortunately, I don't stumble upon them too often, and when I do, people are generally open to actually educating themselves and finding out more. So what can we do to improve awareness of Tourette's Syndrome? On the one hand, um, it is Tourette's Syndrome Awareness Month, which is why you're seeing me in this video. But there is the teal ribbon, which I think is the, is the official ribbon for Tourette's awareness. Basically, if anyone asks a question, so I often get asked why I'm squeaking, people think I've got hiccups, and that's usually a good opportunity for me to explain what Tourette's is, give them a very quick introduction as to what it is, and then I know they've learned something. And also when people misuse Tourette's, I think that's also a good time to sort of step in and say, well, you're saying that someone swearing a lot is like having Tourette's, but actually it's not Tourette's, it's this other thing instead. And it is actually a thing, it's not something that people use to justify swearing a lot. So those are my main ways of raising awareness. And I guess because ticks can sometimes be quite noticeable, then you might get people whispering or talking. So if you're having quite a bad tick day and you're feeling self-conscious, then it can help to just bring it up to people, but most of the time I don't. Lastly, Tourette's is said to be OCD's neurological cousin. Can you tell us why Tourette's is so closely related to OCD? I think this is an absolutely fascinating question and I am totally going to be making a video about this. I feel like this is not enough space to talk about it. But all I will say is that yes, they are certainly related. Basically there are two peaks of time when people develop OCD. Some people develop it during their childhood and some people get it in their early 20s. Obviously it can happen at any time but there are generally two bell curves and that's when people tend to get it most often. And most people who develop it as a kid is actually really tightly related to having tics or Tourette's which I think is really interesting because they do go together and although tics and obsessions and compulsions they are different. There are times when they sort of overlap with each other or you can have obsessions that produce the same level of discomfort as ticks and they don't have negative consequences, such as for me equalising, like having to touch things with one hand and then having to touch it with the other. Nothing, ba nothing bad is going to happen if I don't do it, but it feels almost like a tick, but I can also tell that it is actually an obsession and a compulsion. There's not, it's not quite the same physical feeling to it. So I think it is common for them to happen together. And there's probably some kind of neural pathway that is shared or affected. Um, also in the same way, you might have heard of PANDAS, which I can't remember what it stands for right now, but I know Kat knows more about it than I do. But basically, it's due to streptococcus infection leading to your immune system attacking some parts of the brain, and that generally leads to symptoms of Tourette's and OCD. So this, again, suggests that there's a neural pathway that is shared in some types of OCD, because obviously people who develop it when they're a bit older don't necessarily have tics. So there might be two types of OCD, kind of, at a neurological level. And I think this is absolutely fascinating. And to be honest, yes, when I describe it to people, I will often say Tourette's feels like OCD of the body, or OCD feels like ticks of the mind. Um, sometimes you do get ticks where you have to say things, but it's okay just to say or imagine them in your head. And likewise, there are obsessions that feel like ticks outside. So yeah, this is a fascinating topic and I've already talked so much about it. Um, but I think there's so much more that can be said about this a really interesting question. Thank you so much for having me here, Kat. I hope this video helped you guys or that you found it interesting. My own channel, Squeak Code, I speak a lot about OCD and Tourette's and occasionally other things pertaining to mental illness. I'm sure Kat will let you know much more. And yeah, um, hope to see you on my channel. Thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed having Anissa on the channel. Please go check out her channel, Squeak Code. As I said, the link will be in the description below. She's very lovely and deserves way more subscribers than she has. So go check her out. I may be going on Anissa's channel soon, so subscribe to her now so you can see that video right when it comes out. Bye!